This program was made possible by the Corporation of Plant Broadcasting and from contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome back to All About Plants. Here's our host, Randy the Seed. Hey guys, can you guess what this week's topic is? How about now? How about now? That's right, this week's topic is all about seed coat development. The seed coat starts with developing the first layer. Wait a minute, Randy. Don't you think that you should explain what a seed is first? You're right, of course I should. So what is a seed? A seed is a fertilized ovule containing the plant embryo. To examine the inside of a seed, we're gonna have to cut me open. Yikes. A seed consists of three parts, the embryo, the cotyledon, and the star of the show, the seed coat. What is a seed coat, you ask? It's not just this fabulous coat I have on, it's a protective outer covering on the seed. So why is it so important? What does it even do? The seed coat has an important role in protection. It protects a young embryo from the sun's harmful UV rays. Pathogens. And mechanical damage. It also has a role in maintaining the dehydrated dormant state of the seed. This prevents premature germination of the seed. All of these characteristics allow the seed to travel long distances and grow into a beautiful plant. Now that we've learned the function of seed coats, it's time for the word of the day. Today's word of the day is oxen. oxen. What is oxen? Oxen is a plant hormone that promotes cell elongation, cell division, lateral root initiation, vascular differentiation, and shoot and root development. Seed coat development is not a part of the fertilization process but is tightly linked. The signal that initiates seed coat development originates in the endosperm. There is no cytoplasmic connection between the seed coat and the endosperm, so any signals from the endosperm to the seed coat must be able to cross membranes, like signaling peptides or hormones. What does auxin have to do with seed coat development? In the integument, PRC2 coding genes block the initiation of seed coat development. Auxin can remove PRC2 function. It's still not understood how auxin regulates PRC2 function, but it is known that auxin essentially removes the inhibition and allows seed coat development to occur. Now that seed coat development can occur, let's take a closer look inside the ovule of the flower to see what's going on. The seed coat develops from the two integuments of the ovule the outer and the inner. The outer integument consists of two cell layers, while the inner integument consists of three cell layers. First, let's talk about the inner integument. There are two outer layers and one inner layer. The two outer layers get crushed together and do not differentiate. The inner layer, however, synthesizes paranthocyanidin, which oxidizes to form the brown coloring of the seed coat. Here's a fun fact. In some species, the presence of proanthocyanidin has been associated with the resistance to pathogens and herbivores. What about the outer integument? The outer integument consists of an outer cell layer and an inner cell layer. To start off, the cells in both layers have large vacuoles that consume most of the space inside of the cells. Starch containing amylopplast begins to accumulate in both cell layers. Then mucilage starts to secrete around the starch, forcing the protoplast to assume a columella shape. The vacuoles disappear and the starch begins to disappear as well. The inner layer gets compressed against the outer layer and it appears as a thick inner wall of the outer layer. Now the outer layer consists only of the columella and the mucilage. Now that all the cells are differentiated, it does not mean that the seed coat is complete. We still have to talk about one more step. Let's talk about programmed cell death. 
all seed coat cells die, but it's not as tragic as it sounds. Death is necessary for the seed coat to reach its final form. Cells are programmed to die in the final stages of seed coat development. Cell layers die at different times and in a specific sequence. The first to die are the two hour layers of the inner integument. Programmed cell death in the seed coat is still a, an area of active research. Not much is known about programmed cell death in the seed coat. Wait, I forgot about the most important part, the genes that regulate seed coat development. This is still an area of active research, but here's what I can tell you so far. There are several genes that play important roles in seed coat development, and here are some of the most important. Mucilage production has an important role in seed coat development. A few studies have been done to find the genes that have a role in mucilage production. Perhaps the most important gene is MUMP4, which encodes an enzyme that is thought to be required for the biosynthesis of a component of mucilage. Without the right levels of mucilage, the columella will not form correctly. This is a part of a proposed pathway for mucilage production. Whew. So as you can see, a lot just happened. Let's run through that one more time just to make sure we've got it. The two integuments of the ovule give rise to the seed coat. Most of the inner integument is crushed and the outer cells give rise to a compound that gives the seed coat its brown color. The outer integument cells secrete mucilage to force the protoplast into a columella shape. This helps preserve the shape. And finally, the last step in seed coat development is programmed cell death. That's all for today, folks. Hope you learned a little bit more about seed coat development. Tune in next week when Rudy the Root will tell you all about root hair development.